Yo, what's up everybody? Um, I hope you've all been well. It's been a while since I've made a YouTube video in this sort of format, so I'm a little nervous to be behind the camera again. But I really wanted to readdress um, something I've made a video on before, and that's regarding embouchure changes. Just because I think it's one of the most under-talked about things in trumpet pedagogy, and especially across the internet. You know, like you're, you're a kid going through an embouchure change, and what's the first thing you do? You YouTube how to change your embouchure, or you go on Reddit or some other forum site but there's, there's, there's hardly anything, right? So with this video, I'm really hoping to share some of my experience and kind of give you guys a little bit of an idea of how to think about this process and just some things to maybe focus on along the way. Now, when you're kind of in the early stages of thinking about changing your embouchure or having a teacher tell you that you need to change your embouchure is really taking time to understand why you're making the change, right? like really looking at your playing and analyzing your weaknesses, seeing if it's an issue of endurance or consistency, or maybe you're really having trouble creating range no matter what you do. So quick interjection, I realized after filming this video that I didn't really include many specific examples or videos of me like before, during, and after the Amisher change. So I thought it would be really beneficial to edit a few of those in here just so you guys could get a better grasp of the progression. For me personally, when I was going through it, I really noticed that before I changed, I really was having problems with my consistency. Like maybe three days out of the week, I'd be playing super well, but the other four, it really just wasn't happening. One thing I really didn't mention here is that I had a really hard time dealing with a double buzz, which is basically where you're like your lips are vibrating at two different frequencies and it creates the most disgusting sound ever. So I wanted to include a clip as, as embarrassing as it is of what that exactly sounds like. So yeah, pretty freaking brutal. The next thing I want to talk about is my range before I changed my embouchure. Like I had really good range, like I could rip up and down, no problem, full sound, but I could really only do it for a short amount of time. You know, like I would post on Instagram these crazy clips of me playing these melodies and people would be like, oh my God, like he sounds incredible. Like why would he change his embouchure? But I mean, obviously on social media, you can't see everything. So I would film these clips. Maybe I'd do like three takes and then I'd be like, I can't play anymore today. Like my embouchure and lips would just be completely fried because I was playing on such a small part of my upper lip where like if it just got like a little bit swollen, it would affect my entire sound all the way up and down. It was it was such a fragile system, but when it worked, it freaking worked. <laughs> Range was never a problem for me. On my old embouchure, I was playing, you know, high Gs, double Cs and stuff, but I could do that for about five or 10 minutes, right? And then I would be, I'd, I'd be spent for the day basically. So I think at the beginning, it's really important to, yeah, just understand what's wrong with your playing and why you're making that change, because it'll really just help you a lot along the way to have that sort of end goal that you're always looking towards. And I say that because especially if you're doing a very big change, maybe you're moving it right to left really far or you're changing your lip ratio a lot. Like for me, it was like I played on the red of my upper lip, like hardly any upper lip. And then I tucked it in a lot. And now my embouchure, I would say, is about 50-50 or maybe just a little bit more upper lip. When you're making this big of a change, you're going to sound bad. <laughs> for the first few months, you were going to sound bad. And that's just kind of a fact of the matter, right? So when you understand why you're making this change and what the end goal is, it really makes accepting that fact a lot easier, right? Final interjection. When I say bad, I don't mean you're going to sound terrible, like you're not going to be able to play at all. It's just you're not going to be playing nearly at the same level that you were before you switched. So I wanted to include a clip of me maybe two or three weeks after I had switched my embouchure. And if you compare it to all the other clips, you can clearly see I don't have that same level of ease and command of the instrument. And that's just kind of the reality of making such a big switch like that. For me, it was pretty much like starting from scratch again. Another point I really want to bring up is that everyone's change is going to be different. A embouchure change could be anything from a conceptual thing to an actual physical movement or placement of the mouthpiece, right? 
for me, it was a complete replacement, um, like vertically, like I completely changed the ratio of my lips. But for some people, it might just be a slight adjustment to the right or to the left. Now that being said, just take all this information with a grain of salt. I can't, I'm not speaking directly to you or to your change. I'm just talking about my experience and sharing that. The next thing I would say is finding a teacher. It's a really valuable asset to have a teacher that really knows how the embouchure functions and just a lot about how the body and the trumpet interact. I think that's just an incredible resource, but arguably even more important, I think it's great to have a teacher that's there for moral support. Kind of like I said, you're going to sound bad, right? And doing an embouchure change, going from being able to play the, usual, the way you usually did to now hardly being able to play at all in my case, it's kind of the most ego crushing thing ever. So having a teacher that's really just there for you and will keep you on the right track, because there I had days where I would just spiral. Like I would be playing in, in my practice mods and I would just be like, why the heck am I doing this? I sound so bad. I was able to scream on my old embouchure. Why couldn't I just try to develop that? But for me, at least once you're kind of going through it, you, you have to commit, you know what I mean? There's no foot in foot out kind of thing. So having a teacher that really keeps you on that track and really keeps you in good spirits, I think that's super invaluable. I kind of just mentioned it, but for me personally, I think the best way to do an embouchure change is cold Turkey. Like you're not, dabbling in the new one, but playing on the old one, nothing, nothing like that. For me, I think you just have to fully commit to it and just set aside a few months to really get comfortable with it. And this is especially a point for people in high school and people in music school, like college university. You might have all these ensembles, all these classes that you have to play for, but you're like, man, I got to change my embouchure. Like it's going to mess up my, my audition piece, or it's going to mess up this or whatever. Hot take, none of that stuff really matters. Especially if you're in high school, like, oh, I won't be able to play lead trumpet in the parade or the concert. That moment will pass. Like I look back at that time that I spent changing my embouchure and I look at where I'm at now and I'm just so grateful that I did it and I spent the time and the dedication and I, I didn't look back. And obviously it's really hard to value things like that in the moment. Like it's the thing that's right in front of you and you're like, man, like I really wanna, I really wanna perform the best I can and that's, that's a beautiful mentality, right? But this is really just an investment in your future as a trumpet player. And like I said, every case is different, but just in my case with playing in high school and music school and stuff, like the stuff that I had looking forward, like in the long run, it literally was just like, it didn't really matter too much. So I'd say really just think about that end goal and view your embouchure change as a massive investment into your future. And as one final thing, I guess people might ask what specific exercises I might do while going through the embouchure change or what'll just make the process easier. I'd say just stick to the basics, just lots of long tones, easy lip slurs, slow Clark studies. You know, you really wanna take it slow and you wanna take a lot of rest just because you're using a complete different set or different ratio of muscles in this new position if your change is that drastic, right? So especially in the first few weeks or so, just long tones, lip slurs, some chromatics, and just kind of feel it out and just do what you're comfortable with. Like just practice in short sessions, but try to get a few of them in every day, you know, and then slowly you can kind of ramp up the the practice times and, and the exercises and all that stuff. But anyways, I'm not here to say I'm some sort of guru on embouchures or changes or anything like that. I just wanted to present my experience and just kind of how I view embouchure changes as, as someone who's gone through one just because there isn't really as much info out there as I would like even, right? So yeah, if you have any questions, please, please comment them down below, send me an email, DM me on Instagram, anything. I'm really open to talking about this or sharing any sort of information that I have just because I know how much it sucks to have to change your embouchure. It's, it's, it's such an ordeal and it's like, I always say it's one of the hardest things you can actually do just mentally, physically, everything. So that's pretty much all I have for this video. Thank you all so much for watching and I'll see you next time.